welcome back welcome back people so today i'm going to quickly show you guys how to update or upgrade the software on one of the miners the helium miners that you have now the one i have is the rack version 2 i believe don't even remember to be fair but this should work for most of them i am going to put the link in the description so you guys can actually go ahead and check which ones are compatible and i'm going to show you step by step what you need to do to actually replace the sd card and also upgrade the firmware or the software on there as well. Now, this is just a Raspberry Pi. So this is just a single board PC. So essentially, all you will have to do is download whatever firmware is here. You have to write that firmware to the SD card using something like Etcher. And then after that, simply swap out the SD card that's already in the device. And that's it. You're good to go. Now, after this, I actually plugged mine into my router because for some reason, where I had it before, the Wi-Fi signal wasn't that great anymore. So if some of you are having the same issue as me, where it keeps dropping out for days at a time, and no matter how many times you restart, it still keeps happening, this might be a good solution for you. So here we are on the website, and all you need to do when you're on the website is to scroll down to where it says download the firmware file works best if kept as a zip so simply click on that to download it now if you have google chrome like i do it's going to show up in the bottom left hand corner here i believe firefox microsoft edge and a few other browsers it shows up um, in the top right hand corner here so i'm going to pause this video and come back when this is finished to show you what the next step needs to be my download has finished so the second step you need to install baleni etcher so simply click on this download link here, well, this website here, and it's going to take you to the Etcher website. I'm going to download it. I already have it on my PC, but I'm going to go through the, every single step just to show you guys what to do. I want the x86 stroke x64 version. So that's the 64 bit version. It doesn't take too long to download. It's only 139 megabytes. If you only have um, a 32 bit operating system or a different operating system, you can change it here. And just leave it as portable, that's fine. That means you shouldn't have to install it, right? Now, once that finishes, all you need to do is to click on it to open Beleni Etcher. It's going to ask you, Windows should ask you, are you sure you want to do this? This might be unsafe. So after I've clicked on it, this is what comes up. I'm going to click Agree. It's going to install Beleni Etcher. I didn't think it would install anything because I already have it installed, but let's see what comes up after this. Here we go. And now all we have to do is flash from file. This one, because we already downloaded the file to flash, we can do that. Flash from URL. I have never tested that one, but if you had the link, the direct link of a file you wanted to flash, that should work. And if you wanted to clone your drive, that just simply means to copy all the contents from one drive onto another one. So let's say you're moving from a hard drive to an SSD and you wanted to have all the same files, you didn't want to go in and reinstall everything, that might be a good way to do it. So I'm just going to click on Flash from File. I'm going to go to my Downloads folder here. As you can see, Downloads. And this is the file we downloaded earlier. You just click on it once. Click Open. Now, it already has the file there. It's going to ask us to select a target, so where we want to send the file to. Now, I'm using a 32 gigabyte SD card, however, I highly, highly, highly recommend using 64 and above. 32 is what came with a rack miner and it doesn't work well. That's what's causing the issues because the blocks are getting filled up. So use 64 or greater. 64 should be fine. That's the one I have used and it's working perfectly fine. If you do want to use a 128 gig, that should work fine as well. I'm going to go back to this setting. I'm going to select the target. And in this case, I have a 32 gig. So I'm just showing, I'm just doing this tutorial with the 32 gig. If you have a 64 or a 128, that's what you should see here. Not 32. You don't want to use a 32 gig. I'm going to click select. And then from here, all I have to do is click flash and wait. For, oh, it's going to ask me. Windows wants to make sure that I'm allowing this uh, process. Just select yes. And just wait for the bar on the left hand side here to finish. It shouldn't take long. Um, it's only like 350 megabytes, I believe, which should go really quickly. Once that's finished, let's just wait for everything to finish. So now it's flashing.
Right, so here we have the flash completed. I'm going to just click close on this. And as you can see in the background, quite a few windows popped up whilst it was flashing. That's because new directories were being created. I'm going to close everything down. I'm going to eject my SD card. If it shows up here, you want to eject it. If not, that's perfectly fine. You can pull it from the PC. And the next step I'm going to show you guys is actually how to remove the current SD card in the rack miner, put this one in, and after that, plug it in and you're good to go. But I'll be right back. All right, so the only thing you need for this job is tweezers, well, our tweezers and your rack miner. You're going to use the tweezers to pull the SD card from the rack miner because it's in so far. The first thing we need to do is to actually peel that tape from the rack miner. Now, I've already done this, so mine, is, mine should be easier to lift off. So I'm just going to hold it with one hand. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Just peel the tape off. See? Completely off. It's sticky on one side. Put that down. And inside here, we have our SD card. Now, I, again, already have a one... No, I have a 64 gigabyte memory card in there, but I'm going to switch it just to show you guys how it's done. My memory card is in my laptop. Let me pull that out. So here I have my memory card in a reader. I'm going to use my tweezers. This might be a bit shaky. I apologize. I don't have my tripod with me. Simply use your tweezers. Hold on to the memory card. Pull out. That's it. Done. Now, I'm going to swap it with this one here. So to do that, I simply take it from the reader. And as you guys can see, I could read the red label from this side before I took it out. So it's going to put it back in, in exactly the same way. Just do that, push down slightly, and that's it, you're good to go. It's just like replacing an SD card on a normal Raspberry Pi, because in this shell, all you have is a Raspberry Pi with an antenna connected to it, that's it. So now you plug this back in, you're good to go. I am going to change my memory card again, I mean, just to show you guys how to do it again, and because I already had, if I can get this in focus, let's see. I already had a 64 gigabyte card. There we go. Anyways, let me use my tweezers again. Simply grab onto it, pull it out, put that down to one side. That's the 32. Here's my 64. Put that back in. And that's it, I'm done. I put the tape back just because I want it to look as good as it looked when I just got it. And that's it. It should stick back on there. It's not going to be perfect like it was the first time, but it should be fine. And then you simply go and plug this back into your power. I had mine plugged in by Ethernet, but you should be able to set up over Wi-Fi and it works exactly the same as well. So there we go. 